Hey guys, it's Bubble Sensei. Today we are reacting to the Siege Year 8 Season 2 panel. Now, I have to apologize to my YouTube fans because I haven't actually uploaded any Siege since the last panel. I have actually played it a bit on Twitch, so I actually wrapped up the Battle Pass too. So I'll probably play a little bit more on Twitch. I've also got a couple of ideas for YouTube things, but it's it's hard to come up with solid ideas. Um, so, you know, if there's any thing you want to see on Siege, you want to see me fuck around as the new operators and stuff. It, it was a little bit hard with um, Brava to mess around with her because, <laughs> unfortunately, by the nature of her gadget, people were going to be countering her, countering her a lot when she came out. So it made it a little bit hard to record a video about her. Here we are. The panel's here. I'm really excited to react to this. I hope you guys are excited too. Please leave a like if you do enjoy this. Uh, and please sub if you can. I'd really, really appreciate it. We're trying to hit 100 subscribers. Uh, and if we could do that, that would be absolutely awesome. Leave a comment if you've got anything else you want to see. And yeah, let's get into it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Operation Dread Factor. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway, here to unveil everything that's coming in Year 8, Season 2 of Rainbow Six Siege. We've got a new operator, new map rework, and a lot more to cover. But first, here's... Sorry, I just noticed that there's a massive dent in my Diet Coke. Sorry. That's not important to anything else that's going on right now. I just, you know... <laughs> I've, got, I've got to try and make this non-copyrightable somehow, so this is this is my, uh, my input. But yes, hello Camille. She's very cool. I, uh, I've noticed her in the last few panels. Anyway, let's go. Creative Director Alexander Karpazes with an overview of the season and some roadmap updates. I've heard some good stuff and some bad stuff about what's coming. Um, but I, I want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Welcome to Operation Dread Factor. This Let's is introducing go, a new operator, Fenrir, hailing from Sweden, who's joining the Red Hammer he squad. He looks cool. He's bringing he with him very, the idea cool. of fear to the battlefield. This is a mechanic that we've been working on for a long time, and we finally made it work. Ooh. And we're happy to introduce him to the rest. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That operator portrait is fucking gorgeous like i know that seems like a weird thing to be focused on but just recently like with thorn thorns was really good and you can see again with um fenrir here like oh they've, they've been hitting the nail on the head with some of like the the little artworky bits um as always ubisoft um their art team is really amazing like some of the other balancing stuff obviously people can have complaints about but there's no denying it the people behind the actual graphical side of things you're, you're hitting the nail of the head i'm and we finally made it work and we're happy to introduce him to the rest of the operators on top of this All we right. have a big long overdue map rework for consulate What's he got? We hope you enjoy it i've heard about and this we're too. bringing much much more we're bringing balancing changes I swear to fucking god, if split site still exists after this rework, um, I don't know. I don't really have any bargaining power here. <laughs> I can't say I'm going to quit, because I probably won't. Um, I bought a year pass, after all. But I'm going to be very, very pissed if I if I get back on here and split site still exists. Quality of life changes and accessibility changes to make the game that much more enjoyable to play including Permanent Arcade being released this season for everyone to... One second. Oh, okay, sorry. I um, I don't know how that's going to look in edit, but uh, I completely forgot to uh, tell Otto that we were recording. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's there in case you were worried about him. I wasn't, but some of you guys, for some reason feign enjoyment of his presence so you know <laughs> he's there say hi Otto not feeling very talkative today okay <laughs> sorry I promise that'll be the last unnecessary pause that we do I um it's like I said I'm doing this at like 5 45 in the morning <laughs> so um yeah bear with me here all right back onto it to enjoy as with last year, we want to be fully transparent with what we do with the roadmap and any changes that we make. And these changes are actually informed by you, your voice and your feedback. That means this season we're delaying the frost rework 
Just I've got an idea. Can we so delay that, that to focus never? Focus on the priorities that you mentioned to us when we announced this initial roadmap. That means Grim will be getting a buff this season, as well as the observation blocker being moved up to this season, season two as well. Yeah, but this is stuff we want. For Frost, no one asked for Frost to get reworked. make sure that you can play the Lab TS this season with those changes, there will be a dedicated spot on our six fix where you can give us feedback for Frost. I've got an idea. Suck on this Here one, sit on this one. Me. Don't Rainbow change Frost. Six Siege. And I'm not talking about 20 seconds left on the clock, diffuser in hand, what do you do, fear. I'm talking about this. Okay, what's he got? This is what it looks like when an attacker Holy. is caught in the radius of Fenrir's oh, FNAT Dreadmines. Are you afraid yet? So he's basically fucking Reyna from Valoran. Oh yeah, I don't hate that though. Fenrir brings a whole new way to undermine the attack. Uh, my, my... <sighs> obviously, they're going to explain the counters and stuff, but obviously... I, firstly, I wonder if it's going to affect defenders. And I'll, it probably won't, but, you know, if it does, I'm curious. <laughs> but what interests me more about it... it... <laughs> what interests me more about it? Sorry, I... It's whether Glaz can see through it. I reckon Glaz will be a counter to it, um, which will be a bit interesting because again, it's it's not really the the style of smoke he's used to, but he he may just be the the thing he needs, the team needs, I guess. The other thing is, um, <laughs> I think Brav is gonna be fun against this one, but yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I'll stop talking. Actors advances one that's unlike anything we've seen yet in Siege. Next, you'll hear from concept artist Sunshine Kim about the design and creative vision of this unique operator. And then director of gameplay design, Jeremy Carvon and game designer, Dominic Clement will elaborate on the features that make Fenrir someone to be feared. I like him already though. Fenrir is designed by, once again, our character concept artist, Ow. NJ Chutai, who previously worked on Green. Fenrir looks dangerous, somewhat frightening, but it's- Sorry. I don't know, the audio is alright, but that just- Ow. Turn that one down. It's not reckless or evil. Since he's a scientist and a trained soldier at the same time, we really wanted to capture those two elements in the visual design. We explored uh, light urban combat outfits for his general aesthetics and something more advanced high-tech equipment that could be a focal point of his design. In this case, his neck color uh, slash mask that gives him immunity to his own gadget. Yeah, okay, Keeping so this affects everybody. the design more grounded, we allow certain room for fantasy uh, on his gadget that can really show the character. That immediately tells me that I reckon Pulse might be a good shout to um, kind of combo in with him. Because uh, then Pulse can kind of see through the, go the, uh, the gadget as well. Uh, he can belong uh, both combat and lab environment. What, uh, Warden as well, actually. So when our team started to work on Fenrir, we found interesting information about military scientists conducting uh, researches around uh, psychochemicals. They were looking for ways to fight enemies with cloud of gas that can impair the brain and send a subject into a state of delirium. So Fenrir's device is a diffuser of psychochemicals. When it's activated, the metallic casing opens. When it detects the presence of hostile, a gas is sprayed. When opponents are under the influence of this chemical, their brains are affected, their perceptions are clouded, and their field of view are obstructed with hallucinations. Because of the nature of this character, we build this scary-looking device. Fenrir works with chemicals, so the casing is corroded, creating this skull that became part of his identity. When it triggers, Two glowing eyes are watching you while you are slowly sinking into the obscure universe of Fenrir. I'm so guessing it's going to be bulletproof. Oh, uh, like of the, the casing around, not the actual gadget. He's a gadget. unique trap operator that can truly adapt and redirect his own utility to the ever-changing flow of around. So Fenrir brings the FNAP mine. It's a throwable, sticky gadget that can be deployed pretty much everywhere. Once it's deployed and it's activated, it can be triggered by an attacker that walks in its line of sight. Once it's triggered, the mine will release a toxin cloud. Everyone standing at it will be affected by the effect, which we call the fear effect. In short, the fear effect is essentially a, a curtain, an opaque bubble around you that limits your visibility range to a few meters. Past you know, that, we're like bubbles here. Complete darkness. 
So when the round starts, Fenrir has all of his gadgets in his pocket. And when they're deployed, they're... Hang on, I didn't... They might... Oh, fuck's sake. Sorry, I, that's not what I want to know. Ace. I'm trying to see all of his gadgets in his pocket. Three. And when okay. they're deployed, he's got three to start basically with. Basically, inert. They don't do anything, and they're armored, so they can't be destroyed by bullets. Uh, they can only be destroyed by explosives. Aside from being there and looking mean, they really don't do anything. That is until Fenrir activates them with one of his the three codes. He has three codes and five gadgets. So he has less codes than actual gadgets, so he needs to be mindful oh. of which one he's going to activate and which one he will remain armored. Because once they're activated, they open up and they're no longer bulletproof. So they're very vulnerable to bullets, lasers, and obviously explosives. Once they're open up, they mean business, and it means that they can be triggered by attackers. That's an interesting effect. I, I don't mind this. When you play as Fenrir, your goal is to survive as long as possible. So we made sure to give him a kit that will hopefully allow you to do so. If we look at the primary weapons, you have two options. The first one is the MP7. A classic, really yeah. powerful SMG, and great for close, that, mid, that and lot. even long-range uh, encounters. Zero. So the second option is the SAS G12, which is a very strong, powerful... I don't want to brag, but I got black eyes for both of them. Big win. Uh, I think I've heard what the secondary is. I don't have black eyes for that, but you know. Powerful shotgun that can deal a lot of damage in close range. Perfect to yeah. pair with the gadget, which essentially limits the visibility of the uh, the attackers so you can really get there's definitely some benefits to shotguns that he's got very unique damage. to him secondary weapon we have the bailiff it's a great except for weapon that, that creates <laughs> a lot of destruction for a pistol uh, whether you pick the smg or the shotgun you be sure to have uh, a tool in your arsenal to reshape the map during the prep phase and set up your your gadget the way you really want it for secondary gadgets we went for gadgets that will really synergize well with the operator's main ability uh, the first one is barbed wires. The F not will reduce. The Sorry, I just I want to register the bailiff again because basically that's going to mean that he always has some kind of shotgun based thing in his kit, um, and the reason why that's probably so significant is that attackers might not be able to see peak holes that you've created using either your shotgun or your bailiff, uh, and that is big. That means that you might have lines on sight on them that they don't even realize exist. And I'm very curious to mess around with it and see. Obviously, it's going to be interesting because you got to you got to learn the kind of range at which people can see while in the in the gas clouds. But I definitely think there's some places where if you deploy the gas and somebody gets affected, um, they're going to be completely at the mercy of peak holes that they may not even realize exist. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just I feel like that is going to be a very interesting mechanic to mess around with. I'm curious to see how this uh, affects pro league and stuff because I don't play ranked much, but I've been watching a lot of like pro matches. The Copenhagen major, I was watching to see how G2 and Scars and a couple of other teams were doing. Um, I definitely can see this guy getting some use. Uh, he de he seems quite fun. The visibility and the barbed wire will slow them down. His other option in terms of secondary gadget okay, is so Bob the bulletproof wow. cam. Again, bulletproof, a yeah. great synergy with the gadgets because you can use the bulletproof cam to keep watchful eye on your FNAT. And you can also use the bulletproof EMPs to disable any pesky attacker drone that might be coming in to destroy your gadgets. So Finley is a very flexible option. If you're playing him for the late game, I reckon new players, it, it's as probably as worth very running the camera. Players. Um, for new players, if you don't want to deal with having to manage and jungle with the, all the codes, you can just deploy your gadgets, activate them, and play them like a regular uh, trap operator. If you want to be a bit more advanced and kind of trick the attack, you can really uh, juggle with the codes, activate your I gadgets, think one strategy is going to be leaving one on site, so if the them, attackers band, get so in, get the defuse, kind of you can then activate it while they're in there. Effective and affect as many attackers as you can. Keeping up with the synergy between the operators and the gadgets, you have a lot of synergies with other operators. So like Melusi and Clash uh, can combine yeah. their slowdown effect with the FNAT. They'll have their visibility reduced and also- Oh, dear God. Melusi, I'd already thought of. Clash, oh my fucking. Clash is already irritating enough. Not being able to see around your 
your general area is going to be pain against that fucking op. Because you're, you're not going to know when she's in shock mode and when she's in fucking shoot mode. Oh, dear God. It might oh, be stuck God. in this effect a bit longer, uh, thanks to that. Combining it with other operators like Thorn means that you can kind of catch these yeah. attackers in their moment of panic. I've thought about this as well. I quite like Thorn, so... a lot of damage with these, uh, with these gadgets. My, my friend Another Seb also likes Thorn, so we may try and very useful mix this. With Fenrir is the intel gathering operators, like Valkyrie, like Pulse, like Solis. Uh, they're all very useful operators that can really collect as much intel as they can and share this intel with Fenrir, so Fenrir can be more uh, aware of which one of his gadget needs to be activated in order to be the most effective. Nice. Operators that can be a bit more sneaky could potentially get a bit closer to the victims and give them a good scare, like, well, Cavera. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't thinking of anyone else there, it was just Cav. Uh, you have a couple options in terms of counter. The first one is the classic combo of IQ and Thatcher that can be uh, brought to deal with these FMAPs. So Finca is another very interesting counter. She won't completely remove the effect, but with her nano boost, she'll be able to kind of reduce the effectiveness of the, uh, huh. the fear effect. Like I don't mind more that. More breathing room and more room to see around you and find hopefully cover to be safe. An interesting counter that you can bring is Mountain. Mountain can trigger them and provide cover for the rest of the team to come in and destroy the FNAT that have been triggered. Um, since he has the shield, um, the visibility reduction is not the end of the world. He's still protected. And finally, you have Twitch and Zero that can be brought to hunt down all the activated FNAT and zap them with their lasers. We can't wait to see the Sorry, I... Has he forgotten about Brava? I find it very weird that he didn't even mention Brava when... Because I would have lumped her in with Twitch and Zero because they, like... She's very much similar to those guys. In in that... She's, she's Intel, she's kind of droning sort of style, um, as well as utility clear. I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that Brava has some kind of... The the one thing is that I'm imagining if Brother hacks one of those devices and it doesn't have a code on it, it probably doesn't work. Um, but I, I would hope that Brother still can affect ones that are coded already. The strategies and kind of big brain plays that uh, will come up with Fenrir, uh, he's really an operator that can play with uh, collecting information and removing information from the attackers. So we can't wait to see players run around activating, deactivating their, their FNAT and scaring attackers uh, throughout the next season. This seems fun. I, uh, I'm in. I'm in. We've seen your excitement about the upcoming map rework for Consulate. And now we want to give you more details on the renovations and updated bomb site. And by we, I mean team lead world Jeremy Dowsett. Consulate is one of our original maps, it's eight years old, it was old technology, it needed to be brought up to a level that we expect from our maps. New destruction, new walls, everything's up to the new 2.0 standard. I obviously, I haven't been playing much pre-season, um, year six, um, but definitely I, I've heard a lot of complaints, especially from friends who have got a lot of... Um, a lot more experience in Siege, that this is definitely one of the maps that has a lot of problems. And even as a player that's only been playing the more recent years, I can see some bigger uh, <laughs> challenges that this map has that need to get addressed. Straight upon it, and we can actually fix bugs and issues much, much easier. We've gone top floor all the way down and even out to the spawn point. Sorry, I just, <laughs> pausing again, but can we just address the, the, the scene that we've got in front of us right now? Holy hell, what is this outfit? This man did not dress for work today. He he is the Tiger King of Ubisoft, and I love his vibes. Um, That bent. Oh, it's Ella. Yeah. Nice. Sorry, no glasses on. I couldn't tell who it was. That, it, it's a look. And I'm loving, I'm loving the fact he's being bold with it. But yeah, okay, let's just keep going. <laughs> this map is a very, what we'd call a heavy rework. It's a massive overhaul of everything from the ground up, 
exterior in, everything's been touched. It's gonna feel the same, but there are a few surprises and a few tweaks. Everyone knew that there was a problem with consulate with being spawn peaked or run Definitely. out on quite a lot. So we've gone through and we've looked at all of the lines of sights from the building to the spawns, and we've made it more comfortable for the attackers to actually approach and actually get into the building. So what we've done is we've looked oh. at all of the lines of sights, i.e. all of the windows, all of the doors, anything that looks towards the spawn. And in certain cases, we've actually either put a blocker on the window, say some scaffolding, or we've actually removed the window or blocked it permanently. So anyone that was used to looking out towards garage and getting a cheeky angle... That might change how you attack this, not man. There anymore. Just in if general. If you want to spawn peak, you're going to have to work an awful lot harder for it. Oh my god. There's a new set god. of stairs, yellow stairs, that go all the way up, which aids the navigation, and especially if you need to switch between floors. The biggest Where change that players will notice is the exterior wall on the balcony. So you can actually hold the balcony and actually play. Play with the ebb and flow of the attack and defense. You've got a chance to get in on the balcony now. A lot of things have changed on the first floor. A lot of walls have moved. I'm... New... I'm loving what I'm seeing. But a big part of this is also going to be which sites exist now. Because... <laughs> they weren't lying about major rework. It still... It still feels very similar to old consulate. But... Some of those smallish changes are going to really affect defending certain sites. Um, I'm curious, particularly um, one that I was thinking of is is the top floor when when you're in that little um, officers area. Um, I'm very curious to see if you can still open up that uh, line of sight onto the stairs. Whether or not you have, I don't know, what windows are going to be open, which ones are going to be closed. Or whether the bombs are even going to spawn on there. I'm not sure. Um, but no, this this does seem good so far. I, uh, I'm i not going to be going on the test server. Because that's just... I don't know. I don't see the point of that. But this... Um, yeah, no. I, uh, I'm i hoping for good things with this. Thematics, there's a new thing called Exposition, which is actually a bomb site. So you have Exposition Piano as the bomb site on the first floor. Oh, Entrance lobbies changed. Spiral stairs... You're still going to recognize it. It's the same, but refreshed. A lot more cover and a lot more ways yeah. to actually approach that the balcony. Bomb site. Is quite it's different. less open. It plays much nicer than it did before. Everyone more loves corners to, to play garage. with. The smoke plant was everything. Every time you watch this map get played in Pro League, when it was in Pro League or in Ranked, you know what's going to go down. They're going to plant behind the truck. They're going to smoke and then they're just going to hold it all the way out on the exterior and you're not going to be able to counter them. Now you actually have to enter through a new room to get into garage to the bomb site to actually be able to plant. This means you can't hold it from the outside so you have to enter the building. Same thing if you're attacking from server huh. side. There were lots of lines of sight and they would hold on a really long angle. We've looked at the angles and we've cut them all down. The flow's a little bit different. The bombs are in different places. It's not only is the garage change <laughs> Sub with the subtle grim. new entrance and the doorway through. There's a doorway to the side of it now that goes to yellow stairs. It's always nerve-wracking for the team who did an exceptional job. It looks amazing. The artists were great. The lighting looks great. I think the player's going to love it. So like Nighthaven, you can't ban Consulate. We want the players to be able to experience the new map, the new navigation, and the hard work of the team. In Siege, all it takes is one bullet. And to help you make each bullet count, the shooting range is continuing to evolve. Right. Associate Game Director Christopher Budgen is here to tell you more about the new features, including a destructible surprise. We've been very happy. I'm not going to really give much of a shit about this, I don't think. Range and our it's cool, but it's just not updates. something I do much of. Now, an Operation Dread Factor our Shanghai team is bringing our largest update yet. The aiming lane allows players to practice through oh. the range, whether they want to customize the movement and speed of different mm. targets from the shooting range, so you can test recoil take it back. and damage this is actually directly cool. in an in-game situation. You can create customized setups if you want to adjust the speed, movement, or the distance options of different sets of targets. Now you can master your reticle management in a real-life situation but without having to leave the shooting range. 
What we really want to do is allow players to get their hands on their favorite weapons and their customized loadout and put that directly to use so they can train and improve their skills in the shooting range. While we were really happy to bring the aiming lane for Season 2, we're actually bringing one extra thing as well. We're bringing a destructible wall into the damage lane. Destruction is really important in Siege. And okay. so allowing players to test how much destruction a weapon will do versus the damage that it creates is a new variable that players can choose to determine their ultimate loadout. I'll be honest, that's something I've actually struggled with a little bit as a player who kind of is, has been playing catch up for the past few years, trying to make sure I know everything that everyone else already has figured out. Like, obviously, I figured out pretty quickly that Valkyrie's pistol is very, very good at getting destruction so you can put cams in and stuff. And so I worked out a little bit like that, but obviously... Um, there's just so much you don't know until you play in match. So this, this, I don't know, this is nice. It also looks like a little bit of like a kind of arcade mode, I guess, what which you can practice in. Um, yeah, I can dig it. I can dig it. I, part of it's all, part of the reason why I don't value the, um, this little shooting range thing is because I play quick play a lot. Um, in fact, I mostly play quick play. I, I don't really play anything else. And then that means that I'm usually getting quick lobbies and, you know, not waiting forever anyway. So there's never really been much point to a shooting range. But this looks vastly more useful than um, just being able to test recoil and nothing else. Because recoil is not the hardest thing to get the hang of with a gun. But some of this other stuff, like um, destructibility, this is going to help a lot. Um, but yeah. I know. <laughs> Practice creating rotations or making lines of sight. I'd be curious if pros actually use shooting range at all. What the damage fall off is when you're using your weapons through a soft wall. We're really happy to have destruction right there in the shooting range. From golden guns to headshots only, arcade game modes are a fun way. This is what I thought she was skills. talking about. And in Operation Dread Factor, we're introducing the permanent arcade playlist. For the full breakdown. Let's go to game designer Robert Cole. Do you need friends to play the, these, or are they? We are super excited. Are they PvP? I'm not sure if I'm going to find a lobby in there. And you can get your hands on it coming in season two. We wanted to give a place for players to actually play and enjoy all these arcade game modes that we've released throughout the years. But we also felt like all these game modes deserve a place to be permanent inside the game, and we will release with a, with a list of five arcades. So now you will be got? able to, from the menu, jump directly into a queue for all these crazy and fun arcade game modes. Or you can even go to custom match and create your own lobbies with your own friends. Death we are releasing with arcades like Golden Gun, shots, in which your only weapon is right. the Golden Desert Eagle. Or even Headshot only, a game mode in which the only way to kill your opponent is actually with a headshot. Or even Snipers only, a game mode in which everyone is using Kali's sniper rifle. We're also moving TDM or <laughs> like back into the arcade playlist because we feel like it fits better in here. And if you were paying attention, I mentioned five arcade game modes. And that's because we're taking the chance to release a brand new arcade called Free For All, in which, you probably guessed it, it's you versus everybody else. No teams. Oh, you will dear jump directly fucking into God. A map versus nine other people, and you will have to fight your way to victory. So now players will be able to warm up and have fun without restrictions in these alternative ways of playing. I can't wait to find out what the meta gun for that's going to be. Whether or not they will be removed from the game. So, yeah. Have fun with your friends in this new arcade playlist. I am. Just one second. Okay, Soy Hub, I challenge you. <laughs> Seb, we are we are doing this. We are. I will be getting some friends online to do the free for all shit, and we'll see. We'll see who's the top siege player. I, I've got a lot of friends who have kind of moved over to COD recently, and this free-for-all mode might actually be the way to get them back in here. Um, this seems like a fun way to do things. Anyway, um, sorry, I just thought I'd say that, but I just wanted to bring close attention so that I can look soy in the eyes. You're getting Siege back. You are going to be playing this, and I'm going to kick your ass. Okay, thank you. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Got that out of my system. <laughs> let's, get, let's get back into it. It's coming in Operation Dread Factor. You got a glimpse of it during the sixth invitational, and now it's time to see, right. or not see. I'm curious to see what this is about. Blocker. 
Technical designer Sergi Ledesma from our Barcelona studio is here to teach you all about it and share a balancing update for Grim. All right, what are we starting with first, Grim or the blocker? Intel Gathering is one of the core pillars of the Siege blocker, experience. Okay. We want to reinforce this gameplay by giving defenders more tools to deny information to the attacking team. That's why this season... It is we're something I feel like is much more needed blocker. recently. This gadget, once deployed on the ground, creates a digital barrier that blocks vision through attackers' observation tools, forcing them to drone more aggressively and giving more opportunities to defenders to destroy those drones. Defenders choosing this secondary gadget I likey. I likey, likey, likey. That okay. I'm I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the golden buzzer. <laughs> if I could stop burping, sorry. Bad bad idea deciding to do this with a diet coke. Okay, let's keep going though. We'll start with three hundred pockets, so they will be able to cover large portions of the map. When it comes to synergies, the gadget can be used in combination with operators such as Kaid, Maestro, Does it need or to go in a doorway? To hide valuable pieces of utility. For example, with Maestro, you're going to be able to hide your evil eyes behind an observation blocker and gather information and shoot with a camera without getting your gadget exposed to drones. It can also be used to defend strong positions. You could, for instance, place a deployable shield, a couple of ADSs on the wall, lay some traps, and hide the entire setup behind an observation block. I don't hate this. I don't hate this. Won't know what threats are hidden behind this gadget, so they will have to either. I was literally, <laughs> I was literally going to have a rant either on stream or on a YouTube short or some shit about how Maestro is definitely one of the weakest killers. Um, killers, fucking dead by daylight speaking. Um. Maestro is one of the weakest operators right now because his gadget is just so susceptible to Brava. This is this should have been in last season. Um, they should have they should have waited to release Brava until this was out. Um, but you know it's in now, so happy days. Find a way to destroy the gadget, or pick themselves without enough information to win the gunfight. The gadget can be destroyed by bullets, explosions, or even be hacked by Brava. So defenders will have to find safe positions for it to be useful during the round. Oh, with that the gadget could be in pain. play, attackers will have to drone smarter and with more precision to gather the information they need to win the round. The addition of this new secondary gadget will create new gameplay interactions in the Intel Gathering experience and will also give the defenders more flexibility when it comes to assembling their team compositions. Who gets them? Grim hasn't received as much playtime as we would like. We think right. the main reason is how hard it is to apply the effect onto the defenders. We want to buff him to make his gadget more reliable and impactful. And to do so, we will release two updates. The first one coming this season and the second one later during the year. From now on, the deployment sequence of his gadget will be much faster. So as soon as the projectile sticks to a surface, the beast will be released shortly after. We are also increasing his area of effect. So the beast will stick to ah. more defenders. Additionally, we are doubling the duration of the beast, so the area will be denied for much longer. We are also improving his loadout. He's going to be receiving the bailiff as a secondary weapon and the heartbreak. Praise be. I was literally just thinking he needs something to break. Like, in, in that example that they showed on the new consulate, they, like, he was able to shoot his thing through the wall. He needed something to give him that ability. I was going to say maybe they should give him frags. That is that is everything. That is 100% what he needs. Chat yeah. as a secondary gadget. These new tools of destruction will help him create new Hang lines on. of hard breach edge as a secondary gadget. These new tools of destruction hard will help breach. Him create new lines okay. of for his gadget to be useful. This set of changes will make him more reliable, effective, and versatile. Cash be playing grim. These, these sound like good changes for this operator. So you can expect more improvements during the year. Now I just need a good skin for him. <laughs> it's time for an accessibility update for console players. New controller layouts are coming. Associate producer Jane Gonchar from our Keep Studio has more. I've overheard bits and pieces about this. This doesn't really bother me as much, but if you're a console player... As you may know, we want to level up playing field for PC and console Holy players. Holy orange. And new additional controller layouts are important stepping stones on the way to full controller customization. We have already several of them in the game, but the new one we are introducing a step I'll above be totally and honest, beyond, mine just centered this around from the video. tackling some difficulties that might cause discomfort for players when using the controller. Players who felt that some actions were taking it all of their hands might find this feature is a way to increase comfort. 
other players might find a way to play games. I do find it very useful because I, I, I pay attention to the siege Reddit. Um, already helped us and my understanding is that you couldn't lean in hip fire. For full control um, so, you know. Mapping. I, I guess that's a nice little quality of life change. The we gather uh, that, that they're going to be able to do it now. That final product will meet the highest industry standard and provide our console players the best experience possible. Next up, we've got a new feature coming to match replay. The free camera oh, will yes. give you more flexibility yeah, I've heard about over this too. how you view and show off your replays. <laughs> That's the thing. I think I knew most of what's coming with this update, but it's nice project. to see it, like, all come together. Like, the, this this seems like it's going to be a very, very good update. I just, I'm hoping it's a good season, is like, to the siege, And this is a new perspective of spectating matches. This breaks from the top-down <coughs> view or the <coughs> first-person view of the game. Now you have complete freedom to move around the map as a camera to inspect things that you never saw before and to see strategies from a whole new light. The goal of FreeCam is to provide <sighs> players with the tools necessary to I'm wondering how this will look in a um, pro league. Strategy. No matter where you are, you have the freedom to move around that map and inspect those details that you missed before. This means that the next level of FreeCam in a future update will be an update to the HUD, so you can also hide it as well. This would be a fantastic tool for creating content. This means that you can set up the camera that you want, the capture and performance that you want, so that you can create that amazing video that you've always dreamed about creating inside of Siege. All right. In season... I'm also gonna be honest, um, and this might sound a little bit selfish, but... Sorry, that's a terrible pause. Um, <laughs> but it also sounds very good for the thumbnails. Like, I, um, I, I'll admit, one of the biggest turn-offs for doing YouTube videos is thumbnails, because it's just, it's, it's a lot of effort for something that isn't even gonna, it's not even, like, the video portion of it. It's not the main thing I'm trying to create here. Um, but, having the ability to go free cam, I feel like, at least if I do some Siege stuff, that will hopefully help with creating thumbnails and shit. Um, so yeah. You know, thanks, Yubi. It's, it's again, I, a lot of people give Ubisoft a lot of shit, and I think it comes from a good place, like, in terms of, there, there's good justification as to why they get the shit they do. But my experience watching how they handle Siege, watching how the devs are very open with the public about what's going on, how they support Pro League, how they are very... I don't know, they, they, they've seemed to improve their community engagement in terms of taking ideas and listening to feedback. It just, it genuinely feels like Siege is one of those games that gets a lot of love and care in all the right ways. Um, so yeah, I don't know if this is ever going to be heard by anyone of importance to Ubisoft, but if it does, thank you guys. Um, as somebody who plays a lot of other games... Um, some of which don't get the same level of support. I just, I really, really respect what Ubisoft does. Like, all the different quality of life stuff, they didn't have to make the shooting range. They didn't have to make the arcade playlist. They didn't have to make all the different game modes and events and shit. Um, or they didn't have to mess around with the free cam or even have some kind of match replay thing. But they've, they've done all that, and it's awesome. Um... I think they were in a bit of a right in year six when they weren't adding much in terms of maps, but I'm 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 a big fan of what Yubi's doing currently with uh, with Siege anyway. So yeah, well played, Beers. Season two, we're bringing a quality of life update too for everybody who enjoys playing squads. We're providing squads the opportunity to vote when the squad's ready to jump into the next fight, and the squad leader will instantly be able to move them into that next matchmaking phase straight from the after action report. This isn't the only quality of life okay. improvement we're doing in this season. We spoke at the SI about interactions with gadgets and improving that, and we're delivering with the first step, which is the diffuser pickup, making it more generous and more intuitive in order to pick up that gadget and providing the option to players whether or not they want automatic pickup or a prompt to pick oh. it up. 
Thank God, I'm going to put Automaticon. The future means that we'll be bringing these improvements to other gadgets as well. And like we promised at SI, the idea of putting down your gadget, picking it up, and even throwing it will be on the roadmap for future updates. It's going to look Operation more like Dread Fortnite. Operation Dreadfactor is coming to the season <laughs> test server next week. Get a first look at Fenrir, his fear-inspiring gadget, and the reworked consulate map. And remember, whether you're on the test server or in the live game, reporting issues you encounter to R6Fix will get you a chance to earn some extra rewards. That's all for our show today. Thanks for watching. Okay. Any skin announcements? I'm assuming not, but, you know, <laughs> always good to know. Go on. Hit me with it. Show me Elite. Show me... Okay. Two Elites, an event, uh, gadget interaction, mounting update. I'm really hoping for a good event. I... I know a lot of people love Rainbow's Magic. I couldn't give a rat's ass about it. I did pick up some of the skins just because, you know, it's it's nice customization for a couple of the characters. Um, but practically, it's just... It's not... It doesn't hit for me. I uh, I would... If they're going to bring back an event, I would love to see Apocalypse come back again. Because I think Apocalypse was one that both had good skins in the first place and has good potential for more skins. Not to mention, Fenrir with an Apocalypse outfit. Oh, just... It would be so beautiful. Anyway. Um, <laughs> beside that, let's just double check. It's probably just going to be fan art stuff. No. Yeah, just normal things. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot I had new <laughs> games turning into Fortnite. Exactly, exactly. Um, a couple of L's, a couple of G's, W's, all the rest of it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to guess that this chat wasn't super helpful. <laughs> but, nonetheless, I actually am pretty happy with that. I, I kind of knew going into this there wasn't going to be anything game-breaking or some anything that would, like, fundamentally change the way I look at things. Um, I really wish they gave details on the Frost rework still as to, like, what their plan is with that because <laughs> I just don't want them to ruin Frost. Please don't ruin Frost, UB. I would really love it if you could just not ruin Frost. But it sounds like Grimm's going to be in a good place when it comes out. It sounds like... Um, Fenrir is going to be really, really fun to play as. It sounds like the Bailiff is going to be basically fucking everywhere. Hopefully I can get a Black Ice for that. Because um, uh, somebody was joking on Reddit that they keep giving Bailiff to like all these different operators and stuff. But the thing is, it's so true. The fact that the Bailiff is getting added to both Grimm's rework as well as the new op. It's just, yeah. It's, it's a good change though. I think both of them are going to get good use out of it. Um, I don't know. What else, what else is there to talk about? Consulate rework looks great. I can't, I have no problems with that. The, uh, the new gadget looks all right. I'm curious to see some of the applications of that. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess good job, Yubi. Anyway, um, thank you everyone for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are. In the comments. Uh, again, if you could like and subscribe, that would actually mean the world to me. Um, I promise we'll get those Adept Wraith matches up soon. Just giving you a warning as well. They are very... Um, sweaty. They are, they are like the, the kind of sweaty that's not super... Friendly, I guess. Because it's just... it You know, Adept Wraith has nothing going for him. But anyway... Um, I, I've enjoyed this. I will try and make sure I cover some Siege on YouTube this coming season. Because, obviously, I've been kind of shit of that. But if you're if you're waiting for content and you're wondering where I am, I always go live on Twitch uh, every weekend. Um, unless, of course, there's something goes on. And you can check in my Discord server to make sure you know whatever's going on. Um, but, yeah. <sighs> Bloody Diet Coke. Okay. But thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. Um, take care and goodbye.